Welcome to another video, and today we're going to take a look at installing Linux on an M1 MacBook Air. So I've had this now for, well, well over three years. Um, bought it pretty soon after the, they were first released. It is the base model M1 MacBook Air with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of hard drive. And it has done me very well. It's been a really good, solid laptop. It's kind of been great at everything, like, like development, even some video editing from time to time. Considering its age, its size, uh, it really, and the fact that of course it is the base model, it really has done very well indeed. But, one thing that I've always enjoyed doing on previous Macs that I've owned is dual booting with Linux. It's just nice to have a Linux environment to use, uh, I find. And that hasn't really been a thing for, you know, the start of the M1, the Apple Silicon world. Uh, I know basically there was a team of people that started working on it pretty much straight away, but for a long time, there were a lot of pretty big limitations, and it was kind of a, a goal that I forgot about, put to side, and moved on with my life. However, fast forward three years now, and it seems like we might be in a place where we can actually run Linux fairly easily, and it actually be usable. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to check it out. We're going to dive into the project, and we're going to see if it's actually possible to run Linux on Apple Silicon and use it as a daily driver. Uh, we're gonna do some performance testing. Of course, trying to find some good performance testing metrics is, is difficult. Uh, finding software that runs both on Apple Silicon natively and Linux ARM natively um, and is actually worth running, it's, it's difficult. But I found a couple of synthetic benchmarks that we'll use. And then also we'll see what performance for Minecraft is like, because that's another thing that I do actually use this occasionally for is if I want to play some Minecraft on the go. All right, so let's check it out. The project in question is this uh, Ashai Linux, I think. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but this is a project that's been running for many years now and is specifically to get Linux running on Apple Silicon. They've done an awful lot of work uh, writing drivers, making you know, backwards engineering stuff that Apple has not made public. Uh, and uh, as far as I can tell, it's really come on a long way. So we can have a look at the device support, and you'll see that it currently supports M1 and M2 chips on a range of hardware as well. We're obviously interested in the MacBook Air, we're obviously interested in the M1, and you can see quite a lot of the features are now functional, which for me at least, is to the point where it is now usable for me. Display works, trackpad works, uh, the speakers work, the camera works, USB-C works, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the CPU, GPU uh, are all functional. The only things that aren't working is a USB-C display. Well, I don't usually put an extra display with this machine. This is kind of just a, when I want to sit on the couch or I'm traveling. Thunderbolt, well, I don't have any Thunderbolt compatible things anyway. Microphone, eh, I could see that being a little bit of an annoyance, but again, I don't really use this machine for any like video calls or important work. And Touch ID, which I expect not to work. Uh, that's fine. I can just use a password like a normal person. Uh, so support is definitely there as far as I'm concerned. For other people, of course, you might find that it hasn't got as much support as you uh, would like and some of those are our key components for you so I can understand that that would be a stumbling block but let's dive into it let's take a look at this uh, basically this version of Linux so it's based on Fedora and they actually have a script that you can run to install directly from Mac OS which is kind of cool now I'm not a big fan of having of just mindlessly running uh, scripts from a command like this, I would definitely recommend that you download the script and confirm that it is what it says it is. That's a little bit of a security 
no no for me especially as i'm assuming this is going to need sudo permissions uh but i have checked this and i do know in this instance that it is correct still i recommend you do your own research as well so let's copy this command open up a terminal and let's see what we get uh, basically it'll download the actual script it's kind of going to give you the latest version of the script as well and as you can see it already wants the root password so again make sure you know what the script is actually doing before you run it. Uh, it would help if I put in the correct root password, but there we go. Uh, again, it kind of gives you a prompt to make sure that you actually understand the documentation. I have done a bit of research before this video, so I'm comfortable that we're good to go. So I hit enter, uh, and it's gonna kind of gather all the information about our own system and uh, what we then need to do for us. So here you can see that we have my full main partition, with all the different Mackey volumes that it adds to it. Um, and it actually lets us basically resize and add a new petition for the Linux install. There's a lot of overhead space. So if you see, it says total size, to free space is 150 gig. I've made lots of space to install, but the actual available space is only 73 gig. Uh, there's a massive overhead where basically, because I have Time Machine running on here, it's doing backups and it's storing some of those backups locally. That's actually going to take up a lot of space that the Mac reports as being free space because that it will automatically delete those files when you need the space. But for this situation, it's reserved overhead space. So you have to actually go in and manually remove those snapshots, uh, which we will go ahead and do some time later now we're back and all of those snapshots have been deleted we can try and rerun the script and see if we have the space we need now so this is definitely an issue that you'll only face if you've, you've used time machine backups um, which i do but there we go uh, so we're back to asking for the prompt going to ask us to make sure that we've read the documentation, uh, collect the information, and there we go, back to the same thing. So we're now going to say, yes, R, we want to resize. Okay, and this is what we expect to see. We can see here, it kind of gives us detailed information about our setup. The script is quite clever. It's going to make sure that the minimum size that you can shrink macOS still leaves enough space to be able to install macOS updates. So I believe that's something like 30 gig free space. Uh, so there's definitely kind of some real room here. I've got a very small drive, so it's not great, but we can definitely make use of more of that space. As you can see, it says available space, 125 gig, whereas the free for space is 163 because it is giving us that overhead. So I'm going to probably just split the drive 50 50 um, that leaves enough space for mac os still and uh, plenty of space for linux and then as we use it we'll see what we actually want to do moving forward so it'll accept lots of different ways it can do percentage it can do gig size or you can just say shrink the mac os to its safest smallest value but we're going to do 50 percent uh, and then it's going to tell you well this is actually what we're going to do um, are you sure you want to do that? And yes, we do. So we're now going to shrink that drive space and then make a new space for a new drive.
so we are all ready now to reboot that's everything done from the mac os side that we can do so let's dive into it uh hopefully the angle isn't too bad you can see me in the background but uh, such is life let's follow these very important instructions and get linux installed so we now hold the power button down and let it reboot and load up the startup options okay and we can see now that uh, we have this linux option uh, the color is completely blown out but that does have say fedora on it it does have the fedora logo honest uh, okay so we're going to go continue And then into recovery, as it said we would. We'll enter our password. And then we have this install script here. You should be able to see that. Basically says, you will see some messages advising you that you are changing the security level of your system. These changes apply only to your ASHI, ASHI, I don't know, Linux install and are necessary to install a third party operating system. Apple Silicon platforms maintain a separate security level for each installed OS and are designed to retain their security with mixed OSs. The security level of your Mac OS install will not be affected. You will be prompted for a login credentials two times. Please enter your Mac OS credentials for the Mac OS that you used to run the first step of the installation. Press enter to continue. And as if by magic, it does in fact ask me for my password. then gives a summary of what's going to be changed, specifically the security policy. And if I'm sure I want to do this, yes. And we need to enter username and password. Installation complete. Press enter to reboot. Ooh, that's a good sign. It's doing Linuxy things. There we go, we are in. So we can select our our language, uh, British English, thank you very much. Our location, it, it, well, London is close enough. Keyboard, which is the English layout. Username, we'll go with Zachary, and we'll add that Linux, add a password. Finish setup, and we are all done, and we are booted into Linux. Like I said, oh, oh that was loud. Uh, so we are running KDE here, um, a display manager that I quite enjoy. So we're going to have a gander. We'll set up its Wi-Fi, and then let's give some rough benchmarking and see how we get on. So it's the next day and it's been a interesting time. What the hell? Why are you like this? Oh, come on, please just work. <laughs> you hate me, don't you, Linux? You hate me. Uh, all jokes aside, there definitely are a few stumbling blocks that we've had along the way. For one, uh, you know, something that I didn't realize, but there isn't actually a Linux version of Chrome for ARM. So I had to use Chromium. Not a huge issue, it's just slight annoyance that uh, couldn't sync across all my bookmarks and passwords and all that stuff. Uh, not the end of the world, probably should be getting off Google services anyway. Uh, then I did find that uh, the SE Linux, the security thing, was stopping Chromium from working and actually any apps that are based on Chrome. Uh, this seems to just be a general issue with Linux and Fedora and uh, upper, uh, and distros that use SE Linux in enforcing mode. Uh, so again, just a Linux issue such as life. Then there were some weirdities with the screen recording. So the built-in screen recording just doesn't seem to work at all. And then if I try and use OBS and make a recording, maybe I'll come over here, do da 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 and uh, then we, we stop that. Uh, the output file just is a blank video 
looks like it's working and then it's just not. I've checked it under uh, VLC as well. Just not blank screen, not at all. Which meant that I didn't really manage to get good kind of images of our data testing and stuff, but I did do the pass mark performance tests on the command line and, and here are the results. And I did find that, yeah, actually on under Linux, they're not bad. They're certainly usable, but it is significantly better under Mac OS. So there's obviously still a lot of optimization that needs to be done. I really don't want this to like shit on what the developers have been able to do because the fact that they've been able to backwards engineer graphics drivers and other drivers for different components in this laptop to get Linux running in a at all usable state is an amazing feat and a real uh, detriment to their um, determination and skill. I, I, this is not what this video is about. I just wanted to see if it's actually usable. Is 2024 the year of Linux on a Mac? Uh, and so I just want to let that straight, like any result is, is incredibly impressive, but Mac OS is still more optimized and performant uh, and then that kind of reflects the same under minecraft again screen recording wasn't working so um yeah i had to get some just other footage i mean minecraft is completely payable the trackpad is way too sensitive way <laughs> that's just, just me moving around a little bit so you have to be very careful but it's completely playable you know it's um we're running at like 12 chunk render distance and if i remember Command, there you go. So, yeah, you know, getting around 80, 70 frames per second, it's not bad. It's totally, totally playable. Again, we were facing where, you know, I would say performance was maybe half under Linux that it was under Mac OS, which is a shame, but still quite usable. So there's still a lot of graphics power there in a small, light laptop. So that kind of brings me to the end of the video and the question on everyone's lips is, this the year of Linux on a Mac? Well, I think there are definitely some use cases where you can very much use it now. I think if you need a Linux environment in a lightweight, portable, with a long battery life laptop, this is actually not a bad option. We're definitely doing well there. And the work that they've been able to do is amazing, to be honest. I have to have to admit, like, I'm boggled by their reverse engineering and everything else that they've done over the last few years. So completely impressed by that. For me personally, it's not there. For me personally, there's no advantage to use Linux over Mac OS for what I use this laptop for. Uh, and I'm just kind of losing performance and kind of Linux annoyances by using it. So I will be wiping and going back to Mac OS uh, but still, it's been absolutely fascinating taking a look at what is available now, considering, you know, three years ago, it wouldn't run at all. It wasn't possible. And no one really knew if it was going to be possible at all. So amazing work indeed. But still, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again next time. And bye for now.